Now, my biggest headache and constant struggle over the past few months has been getting my B-roll in focus. I'm Eric, I'm a freelance video creator based in Boston, Mass. I shoot, edit, animate, composite, etc., and I talk about it all on YouTube. Whether it's 60 frames per second or 120, doesn't matter. As soon as you're in slow and fast mode, you lose face tracking autofocus. For those who are unfamiliar, slow and fast mode is how you can record at a higher frame rate while playing back at 24. To be clear, autofocus still works, just not object tracking or face tracking. I almost always use manual focus. However, with the size of the C70, I've been using my Ronin S more and more and therefore relying on the autofocus on nearly every shoot. You can tap on whatever area you think your subject will be for the majority of the shot and hope that if they stay within that box, they should be in focus. You could always just like raise your f-stop and get more things in focus and therefore your subject is more likely to be in focus, but then you're sacrificing so much of what I love about my images on this camera, the depth of field. So this has actually led me to straight up just be embarrassed on set. When I have to ask my subject to redo an action three or four times because I know the autofocus was hunting or just completely off. And if I'm handing this footage over to an editor, I feel like an amateur handing them footage that's half out of focus. Even if there's good pockets of footage in there, I don't want them to have to source through all that out of focusness to find the, the little two second snippet that the autofocus was working properly. So this had me considering buying an R5. The, the tracking in the a7S III and the R5 and all these mirrorless cameras is so good. I love internal NDs, I love XLRs, I love all of the features that come with a video camera because I only shoot video. But this lack of autofocus tracking was driving me so crazy, I was considering dropping five grand on that R5 just for gimbal work. I recently had the pleasure of shooting with Neil Howland, who is a far superior cinematographer to myself, and he also has all of the fun toys. He was gracious enough to let me borrow his Ronin RS2 to pair with my C70. The RS2 comes with a follow focus motor, and the new handle has a very easy dial to control that motor. This really saved the day when the autofocus once again was ruining half my shots, and it made me realize I should just buy the original Ronin S's follow focus motor. That way I don't have to rely on the autofocus. I'll be able to use the dial on the Ronin's handle and manually focus. So that seemed like a pretty good solution. And I ordered it. And the gimbal already came with the dial in the box. In the few days between me ordering that motor and me receiving that motor, Canon released a firmware update to the C70. Now it still does not enable tracking in slow and fast modes, but the regular tracking mode in 24 frames per second I almost never used because it was such a clunky workflow. You had to touch a physical button and then you could tap somewhere on the screen. And then to change subjects, you would have to hit another different physical button to cancel that. And then you could tap another object to track. So now with this new firmware, you have to switch the frame to whole area. And now it's just a tap to track. So the new firmware opened up the 24 frames per second object tracking I would actually use. So that's great, but it did not solve my initial problem of slow-mo not having any tracking. Then I started writing out this video where I was gonna complain about how I can't get good slow-mo with autofocus on this camera. And I was gonna talk about how I might even sell this camera because the autofocus is driving me nuts. And when I was scripting it out, it hit me. There's another way to get slow motion in this camera besides slow and fast mode. A way that would not disable face tracking or object tracking. I could manually change the frame rate from 24 to 60, and then I could slow down the footage in post either by slowing the clip down to 40% or by interpreting the footage to 2398, just like I used to do with my DSLRs back in the day. So I tested it, it fucking works. The camera does not handicap your autofocus functions if you tick up the frame rate manually. So it might seem obvious to shooters that mostly use mirrorless cameras. I never even thought of it. On my C100 Mark II, I took advantage of the custom button to slow and fast mode. And when I first got my C70, it was second nature. Slow and fast mode is all I used. Uh, it's so nice because you can review the slow-mo shot while you're still on set and see if you got what you needed. You don't have to explain to your client during playback that it's gonna be slow-mo, we just can't see it in slow-mo right now. Slow and fast mode is awesome. So why not use it? So I thought. By the way, you may have noticed my LCD is a bit askew. I broke the hinge recently. If you're interested in a video about the process of getting the screen repaired, subscribe because I plan to make that soon. So you can knock up to 120. There is no such thing as 120 frames per second unless you're in slow and fast mode. But I can now shoot 60, which is pretty much the only thing I shoot unless like there's a really 
fast action happening, 120 frames per second is kind of overkill and makes people just moving kind of awkwardly slow. So I tend to stick to 60 anyway. And not only face tracking, the new improved object tracking from the new firmware works too. I no longer need to click my custom button, which I had set to 10 to track. Now that 10 is free and I set it to frame rate, which isn't in the custom button options, but you can set it as a custom menu selection. So now I can switch into slow motion without digging through the menus. I don't have to change the shutter speed because it's a cinema camera, so it's a shutter angle. So the frame rate is the only adjustment I need to make. I'll still leave slow and fast mode as a custom button for shots that I want in 120 and am okay with not having the best autofocus because I always prefer it to be slow motion in camera if possible. But now I have both options. So let's test this one touch tracking a little bit further. My cold brew is looping on a slider at full speed and my C70 is set to F1. All right, it's working pretty well. Now let's give it some obstacles. Like a Frankenstein of friction arms. It definitely loses it, but it does quite impressively remember what it's supposed to be tracking once the original object is fully visible again. So that first test was with hard light, and I was curious how the results would change if we had very soft light, and therefore less contrast. It definitely struggles more, but I think this is actually not the quality of light, it's the amount of light. The Fresnel adapter magnifies the output, so by switching to the lantern I definitely ended up with a darker image, so I compensated for that by adjusting the NDs and the f-stop, and now it seems to be working just about as well. When I tossed the obstacle back in in a different location, I realized that the amount of contrast in the background actually has a big impact on the reliability of the track. For instance, my couch pattern was very attractive to the tracker for some reason. It wanted to stick to that once it lost my subject, whereas previously when it got off track and it was just on a white background, it would find the can pretty easily afterwards. So the results are very situational. Now if I make my obstacle twice as obtrusive by folding it in half, the tracking loses the can completely. You know, we can only expect so much. Now what impressed me the most was how the tracking works all the way to the border of the frame. Even though the 0.71 adapter does not let you start tracking on the like far sides or top and bottom of the frame, but once you start tracking on something in the center, the tracker will follow its subject all the way to the border of the frame. And when you leave the frame completely, it'll find the object once it returns. I'll drink to that. Now back to that motor in the mail. Is it still worth keeping for $180? The C70 is already so heavy on this gimbal that adding the weight of the motor and taking away the stability of the second grip would make flying this thing just exhausting. Never mind the extra prep time to install the focus motor on every shoot and calibrate it every time I switch lenses. I think with the new 60 frames per second method that allows for tracking, I'm going to stick with autofocus for now and just return this accessory. Anytime I want to rack focus, I can just tap on the screen and it will track a new subject with that new firmware. So the autofocus on this camera could still definitely improve. Even in 24, it's kind of spotty. It does a lot of hunting. Don't even try to use it if you're in low light. You know, that's a limitation I'm aware of and I can work around, but I could not work around the lack of tracking. And after a handful of shoots with the Ronin, I thought I had found the fatal flaw in the C70. But through the course of making this video, I also